Hello and welcome to Ticking All The Boxes this week where we're going to look at Rose Hill on Saturday. Um, tracks are good three, rails out four metres, festival stakes meeting, Nick Ashman, what's happening? Um, not much in here. Very little, very little. Um, Some warm up here. Yes, I don't regard this as one of the most exciting meetings I've ever seen but... No. The festival's a good race. It is a good race, good competitive race. You could make a case for plenty in that, but... Um, we got a live audience again today, I see. Yeah, yeah, we've got the dog with us today. He's just having a bit of chomp. I'm tipping... <laughs> I was about to say, I'm tipping it'd be better behaved than that uh, Chris Roots who was watching us once before and then you said the word chomp and... You'd never be lonely being a dog, would you? Anyway. All right. Um, what, was that, what was that joke? That like. No, I don't, I don't want to know about it. I don't want to. We're going to ride though. We'll That's get ourselves it. in trouble, mate. <laughs> anyway, all right. Um, oh, just quickly, that race in Perth, the Group One's on Saturday, the Kingston Town Classic. Yep. Um, wait for age. How could you tip anything to beat Lucky Gray? Okay. I personally couldn't. No, I, I'm not sure if he uh, gets much past a mile. I'm not saying he can't, but I, I haven't seen enough in his form to, to suggest that he will. But um, just the way he's going and everything. He... Well, he's just, I think he's better than them and just at the weights he's he's pitched in, but I won't be betting. But, um, what price is he? I don't know. I haven't even had a look. I'm not, not really interested in it, to be honest. But anyway, the first at Rose Hill. The first at Rose Hill, it's an entertaining affair. The Blackwoods Apex Tools Benchmark Handicap. Uh, 1800 for the three year olds. Mm -hmm. We've got some prices. Sportsbet can give them to us, though, I think. Yeah, yeah okay. why not? Yeah. Uh, ferment is $3.80. Hawkspur, $1.90. 750 Mintaro, five fifty. Arousing suspicion. And the others are double figures. Don't know about you, mate. I can't back anything to beat Hawkspur, but I don't know if I'll be taking the $1.90. Um, they've backed this horse a few times throughout its career as if it was going to win the way it did last start by four and a half lengths. Unfortunately, that was its first win in 10 starts. I did notice that Chris Waller, <coughs> trainer, got it up as a two year old to 1,800 metres, which is probably a sign that he thinks it's a real stayer or got a fair bit of staying potential. So or it's just slow. Or it's just slow. Uh, so the fact that it did come out and win by four and a half when it got to the 18.50 this campaign, it might just go right on with it here, but dollar ninety. I'm not taking a dollar ninety about a horse that's had ten goes and <clears throat> has won one with five seconds, that's mm. for sure. Um, Mintaro's the horse I found, David Payne's horse. One on the Kenzo, two runs back over 1,500 metres. Mm -hmm. Then went to Rose Hill last start. Um, Behind Al Dragon and, and Bradman, finished fourth. Uh, but he was three wide. He had no cover, and that was the key. You know, I thought he stuck on all right after a tough trip out to 1900 with that run under his belt from a decent draw this time. $7.50 if you have to have a bet. I'd be having <coughs> five bucks on him rather than something on Hawkspur and charging into odds on about one that's won one from ten and run second five times. Yeah. Wow. So that's the first. That was easy. First. Race two, the two year olds, the Blackwoods. Alum Lube. What's Alum Lube? I don't really want to know. <laughs> Blackwoods Alum Lube Handicap. We'd have to ring a lube specialist. We got one here? Oh, I don't think we do. <laughs> oh, I just thought I'd ask. <laughs> All right, um, race two. Here we go, some prices. Gracious Prospect, 440. Choice Dawn, 550. Champagne Cath, 230. Rock Dreaming, 6. Trafalgar Bell, 480. Uh, the others are 2101, 201. Um, settled on two here. Rock Dreaming was 9 into 5 last start. Where there's smoke, there's usually 5, particularly with 2 year olds. was a bit disappointed. I um, think there was probably a couple of reasons for its failure. Plus, it also did run into certitude. It looks at what were the reasons? Uh, I think James O'Donnell from memory jumped off and said it wanted to pull, wouldn't settle properly. If you remember correctly, he tried to sort of get in. It was just pratted out three wide initially, he tried to get in. It, was, it just didn't suit a two-year-old. It just had to go back and try and get in and then try and get out and run. And I think it's a forgive run. I think it was paying $3 or $4 would be nuts, but the fact that you're getting six bucks, it's not too bad. And the other one is Bjorn Baker's horse, uh, Trafalgar Bell. <coughs> Finished second to Champagne Cath, who's the warm favourite for this race. 
Um, just with two, it's just a little theory of mine, that's all. It's just if they give him the, the two trials uh, compared to the one Champagne Cat won her second trial. Um, and Trafalgar Bell was its first trial, so I'm just tipping that there might be a little bit more improvement to come out of this one, Trafalgar Bell, that is. And for those reasons, I'd rather have something on it. Um, none of these massively excite me. I thought Champagne Cat trial pretty good last start. You don't want to get the Allen lube out for it? Uh, no. Nah. I, I reckon I, I'd be surprised if Trafalgar Bell beat at home. In saying that, Trafalgar Bell's got the better draw. But Choice Dawn uh, got the race experience, did a good job to win on Deboe. Granted, it was only at Scone, but they lapped the third horse. That's usually a good sign. She's a swash there out of a mare called Dawny Dancer. I remember, I think, Roggie trained her. She was a handy, handy-ish mare. Yeah. Um, just, and Neil Godbolt's had success coming to town in recent years with these surly season two-year-olds. So, you know, 550, if you can get each way odds, that'd be the way you'd play. But, yeah, it's, I don't think this will be the strongest two-year-old race we've seen this season. Yeah, probably not. But then again, I'm not convinced too many of them have been real good. But only time will tell. Mm -hmm. All right, race three. Good to go. The Blackwoods, no amber lube anymore. Uh, CRC Industries, benchmark handicap 1,200. Now the top weight, Dancers on Stars, is scratched. Okay. Grand Business 6, Heart Tester, $1.90. Long Lasting 7, Treaty 16, <laughs> Slippery Moss 11, 550 Young Fun. I thought the runs of Grand Business and Long Lasting were pretty good first up behind, uh, was it Golden Sunshine? Mm -hmm. Yep. Off the top of my head. Uh, Heart Tester looks like it's a promising horse. Um, whether you want to take $1.90 about it, uh, I'm not too sure. Grand Business last campaign <coughs> improved a fair bit into his second up run. Um, he did also go up 400 metres in distance in that race. Um, but he might be a horse that takes a run or two to fight on his peak. Long lasting, just got home really well uh, along the inside last start. And the horse that just has something on, particularly at the odds, is Treaty. Just comes into the race with a different form line. Most of its career starts have been on a wet track and it, you'd have to think it's going to get a dry one on Saturday. Uh, and I just thought that represented a bit of an unknown about it. Um, it's got, you know, it's, it's had to run against horses like <coughs> Nozita, She's a Stalker and Deshamik. Handy horses and um, yeah, the 17 bucks or the $16 there, you could have something on there. Yep, uh, can't argue with that. Interesting, I've spoken to a couple of trainers here. Okay. Uh, Waller gave Heart test a good strong push. Said he's, you know, he thinks he's a stakes horse, yep. um, which, you know, it's not something Chris goes out and says a lot. So, I think you got to respect that. Um, he did say about the stable mate Grand Business. He thought he was looking for fourteen hundred, but just he just thought he could squeeze another twelve hundred out for him. He said he thought the first up run showed he was looking for fourteen hundred, mm -hmm. and it was a, a fast run race. That first up run that it came out of and long lasting came out of Golden Sunshine just flew along in front. Mm. Had him chasing the whole way. Long lasting trailed her in the run. I actually thought he did a really good job to stick on as well as he did. Mm. I think it'd be better served by a slower run race here. And at $7, um, might just have something on him just to knock the favourite off. Not with massive confidence, but it's just, just a value thing. I think he's run, even though it was all right, I think it might have even been better than what it looked. Mm -hmm. um, and just more gentle tempo here from that from that drawer or box seat. If he gets a run at the right time, he might take some catching. So four for me, something small. Okay. Any thoughts on the eight? Young fun? No. Victorian, one of one the of provincials maiden. last start. I yeah. Guess, I guess if there's money for it or whatnot, you can no. really respect it. But. Yeah, got beaten at Cranbourne pretty easy and then... You know, as I said, then went to, to Ballarat and got the cash. Blinkers did go on, so it's probably improved significantly. But um, yeah. he's doing a good job, Pete, bringing his horses up to Sydney. They're performing, so you, you've got to respect it. Yeah. yeah. I had a double last weekend, didn't I? Yeah. Well, I wouldn't be taking the price about it. No. Compared no. with the other one. Yeah. But I, I could have something <coughs> on. 